What is going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in this video, we're going to take a look at how to create this really cool zooming lens effect here. Now this is a really cool transition that you can use for really action packed stuff, whether it's sports or montages. But it's a very cool, you know, quick transition to add to your projects to kind of stray away from those simple wipes and fades. You know, add a little more taste to your projects here. So it's fairly simple to create. But before we get started, I just want to go ahead and give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the all in one solution to create really beautiful websites for your online business store portfolio. They have tons of templates to choose from, beautifully crafted themes. Everything is completely responsive, regardless of screen size. They have amazing support. And best of all, you can save 10% off your order if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout. So check it out, squarespace.com slash DOJO. So back inside After Effects, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and create a new composition. And basically what we want to do is we want to design this transition to where it's reusable and it's easy to reuse in other projects. So we're going to have to build this thing a little bit more efficiently than we would normally do um, because it's a transition here. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. We'll call this Lens Zoom Transition. And we'll make it 1080p and hit OK. And this is basically where you kind of just drag in your own video files here. I have these two comps which represent my video files. And this is where you would normally just, you know, do your normal trim, you know, just edit your, your shots the way you would want it. And then let's say that I want to create a transition, you know, somewhere right here. And then so this is where I'm going to start designing. It doesn't really matter where you start the transition, but, you know, I'm going to start right here. So let's go ahead and create an adjustment layer. We'll call this layer new adjustment layer. And we'll call this the in. And this is going to manage the beginning of the transition. So we'll go ahead and hit the page up key to go back a frame and go ahead and hit alt or option and hit the closing bracket to kind of trim the adjustment layer to our current time indicator here. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this. We'll call this out. And we will move it to the beginning of the second clip here, video two. And we'll go to the end here and we'll just uh, just drag it to the end here. So basically what we have here is we have an adjustment layer for the same duration as our video one and our video two. So that, you know, we're not going to touch our video one or two layers. We're not going to add any keyframes. We're not going to do anything to these video layers. We're going to add it to the adjustment layers right here so that you can reuse it and save it as a preset and apply it to whatever you're using here. And all you need to do is trim the adjustment layers to the proper length. So the first effect that we're going to apply to the in adjustment layer here is an effect called transform. And basically this will just allow us to control the transformation properties of this adjustment layer here. And then we'll go ahead and apply another effect here called optics compensation. Drag that in. And lastly, we'll apply a CC radial blur. And this will be used to kind of fake our motion blur here. So let's go ahead and just focus on the transform right here. So basically what we want to do is we want to kind of start right around here. Um, we'll go ahead and hit a scale for 100%. And we're going to hit U on the keyboard to show the keyframes. We'll move to the end here. And we will just drag it up to maybe let's just say 150. And we'll just drag it to the end here. And we will easy, easy keyframes. Go ahead and hit F9 or go to animation and go to keyframe assistant and go to easy ease. And we'll go to the curve editor here and just adjust the velocity speeds here. And so we don't really want it to kind of ease out. We kind of just want an ease in. Pull this a little bit, something like that. Just very subtle. So now what we have is a simple scale up. Perfect. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the optics composition here. Go ahead and turn that effect on. We'll set the reverse lens distortion to on. And so now when we play around with the field of view, we get this really nice warping distortion. And this is going to be the main driver for our effect here, as you can see. So pretty cool stuff. You can create some pretty cool warping transitions this way. Um, but so we'll go ahead and start at zero. Hit keyframe for the field of view. Again, hit U, U to show the keyframes. We'll move to the end and we will go ahead and just pull this value up to 160 or so. And we'll just pull this out. And like before, we'll go ahead and apply a basic easy ease and go into the curve editor. 
and kind of just adjust this, you know, less easing at the end, more gradual ease in the beginning here. So it kind of just kind of warps in slowly. So it's something like this. So now you're starting to get the idea of what we're doing here. This is looking pretty cool, but now, you know, we need to add some fake motion blur. Now, because we're not actually moving the position of these layers, there really is no motion blur, which is why we're faking it with CC radial blur. But of course you can use third party plugins if you wish. We'll go ahead and set the amount to zero. We'll set a keyframe for that. And we'll go ahead and switch to a fading zoom. Again, hit UU to show the keyframes. And we'll go to the end here. And we'll just set the motion blur to around 60. So if we go in the middle, we can take a look at the motion blur here. So this is with the radio blur off and on. So it kind of just adds that extra punch, that extra fierceness to the zoom here. But we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll just copy this effects over, copy it, control command C, and paste it into our out adjustment layer. Hit U to show the keyframes. And again, we're gonna have to adjust some of this stuff here. Basically, we're flipping it. Um, so for the scale, we want to kind of start off kind of large. So maybe like 135, the scale for the out adjustment layer. And we'll end at 100, obviously, uh, full scale. And then for the optics compensation, again, at the end, we want it to be zero, obviously. And at the beginning, I'm just going to double click on the keyframe here to edit it. We're going to change it to maybe 135. Uh, you know, a little less distortion. We don't need that much distortion here. And, you know, it just depends on your image. And also for the CC radio blur, we'll set the initial amount to, let's just say 45 and then end it at zero. So essentially we're flipping the keyframes around and just modifying the values. So we start with extreme distortion, extreme scale, and then we end towards uh, the normal scale here. And of course we'll go and adjust the uh, the easing for this. So it's the exact opposite. We don't want it to taper at the beginning, but we do want it to taper at the end. And so just gonna pull that, adjust it for the field of view, same thing here. So another thing I wanna add right now, it's a slight rotation. So again, this is just another layer of complexity to add to the dynamics of this transition here. But basically we're gonna do a slight rotation twist, just kinda add some more uh, variation to this whole scene here. So to do that, I'm gonna start at zero for the in adjustment layer here. And you know, of course we'll start at zero and we'll go to the end here and we'll just change the rotation to, I believe let's just say negative 15. So essentially we're just kind of rotating a little bit. Just like that. And then for the out, uh, we want to pretend that we're completing a full circle. So essentially we're gonna set, set a keyframe for rotation. We're going to set this to uh, 360, cause that's a complete circle, minus the value that we put before. So minus 15. So we're gonna start at 345 and we're gonna end on zero as if we completed the transition, except we're not gonna end just on zero, we're gonna end on the revolution one. So it's as if we made a full transition, even though we didn't here. So, so we're gonna do this nice kind of rotation bend, and then we're gonna finish it. And these can, again, hit you, you to show the keyframes. We will easy ease these keyframes here, animation, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease, or F9. And we'll go ahead and just kind of pull this a little bit for the out. I just wanna pull it at the ends here. So as you can see, the second rotation is a little bit off. It's basically going the wrong way here. So basically we should continue the motion instead of reversing the motion. So we should actually have done 360 plus the 15 value that we added. That way it's gonna to rotate to the right and continue rotating to the right to finish it. But the timing looks pretty good. We can just maybe drag these last uh, few keyframes out a little bit, a few frames, just to kind of slow it down a little bit. But just like that, we have our main transition here. And basically from here on out, all you have to do is add extra layers of complexity. So for the original example, basically what I did was I added a new adjustment layer for some chromatic aberration. And there are tons of chromatic aberration scripts and plugins. All you have my Dojo Glitch script would do the same thing pretty much for free. Uh, or if you have a uh, universe, you can actually use the amazing 
uh, chromatic aberration effect uh, from universe. This is a paid plugin, uh, by the way, but it's a pretty cool suite of effects and you can create some really cool stuff. So basically what it did was I changed the lens texture to something else like viewfinder, lower the texture down. Basically I uh, decreased the edge blur to 0.8, radio blur to maybe like two, just kind of expanded everything, expanded the fall off a little bit. And then, so you, that's kind of a nice distortion effect to this whole kind of lens appearance to it. Another thing we can add is a simple camera shake to the transition. And of course you can do this using a null object and use a wiggle expression for the position and rotation, like I've showed many times before. Or if you have universe again, you can use the camera shake effect in universe again. Uh, universe is a paid plugin, but it's a very, very great suite of plugins to kind of add the cherry on the top of the icing on the cake kind of uh, effects to your projects, your motion graphic design and your visual effects. So basically what I did was I just kind of timed it up. So maybe around here, I'll set the amount to let's say 135, 135 here as well. And then I kind of just tapered it off to zero. So basically no camera shake um, in the beginning. And then we have a lot of camera shake during the, the climax, the peak of the kind of transition here and the frequency to maybe like 1.4. And then just something like that, just add some more variation to it. And then of course, let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview. And just like that, you create this really interesting kind of zooming lens effect within After Effects, pretty much using all built-in plugins, except for the finishing touches of Universe here. Um, but basically that's how you create it, very, very easy to use. And if you wanted to reuse this, basically you would just uh, save two presets, the in and the out. Just go to uh, select all the effects here and just go to save animation preset, name it, and then do the same thing for the out. And then just reapply the presets over and over again to your adjustment layers and trim them to reuse them. So it's very, very cool. I'll go ahead and post a free download of these presets on my website. So you can download for free and use them as you wish without having to redo all this stuff here. But it's a pretty cool effect and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. All the plugins I use will be linked down below in the description. So check it out. My name is Vincent Wynn from the creative dojo.net and I'll see you guys next time.